Begin by safely lifting up and supporting your vehicle. For additional assistance on this task, please follow the link at the end of this video. With the vehicle safely in the air, begin by removing the six 8mm nuts holding the engine tray on. You're going to have to remove the strut from the steering knuckle to get access to the control arms. It's a good idea to support the knuckle with something while working. I like to insert a lug back into the rotor and then support the assembly with a bungee cord or rope attached to the spring. You can do this if you are going to replace one arm at a time. Do not remove both arms at the same time or the knuckle will put too much pressure on the tie rod and brake line and you will damage them. There is a drop link that attaches the sway bar, red arrow, to the strut, yellow arrow. You will need to remove the link from where it attaches to the strut by holding the large nut, red arrow, with a 16mm wrench and turning the smaller inner bolt, yellow arrow, with a 7mm. Push the link out of the strut, red arrow, and set it aside. I like to reattach the hardware, when possible, yellow arrow, to make finding it for reassembly easier. Remove the single large nut, yellow arrow, and bolt from the steering knuckle to strut with a 22mm socket and a 12mm allen to hold the bolt. There are two 21mm bolts, yellow arrows, holding the strut to the lower part of the steering knuckle. Remove these taking care that the steering knuckle does not swing out and hit something once you free the strut. This photo illustrates where the upper control arm connects to the steering knuckle, red arrow, the chassis, yellow arrow, and the sway bar bracket, green arrow, that will need to be removed to get to the chassis bolt. You will need to remove the ball joint from the steering knuckle. Use a 21mm socket and remove the nut. You should not be able to use a pickle fork here. Leave the nut threaded on the end of the joint to protect it and give it a light tap with a hammer. To remove the control arm from its mount on the chassis, you will first have to remove the sway bar bracket. Use an E12 reverse torque, unscrewing the mount bracket and move it off to the side. Next, use a 21mm wrench and socket to remove the nut and bolt holding the control arm to the body. Pull the control arm down and out of the mount. If the control arm is not bent and the ball joint is fine, you can just replace the bushing. The bushings are known to be a weak point on the W203s and should be inspected every 30,000 miles. This bushing is shot as you can see by the damage indicated by the red arrows. If you have a press, you can easily press the old one out and the new ones in. Just make sure you press around the edges of the bushing and not on the rubber section. This will destroy your new bushing. If you do not own a press, you can still save some money by taking the arms along with the new bushings to a shop. Most shops will press the old ones out and the new ones in for a nominal fee. To remove the lower control arm, you must follow the same steps as removing the upper. Make sure the strut is free from the steering knuckle and remove the 21mm ball joint nut, red arrow, and then the 21mm nut and bolt holding it to the chassis mount yellow arrow. Do not forget you cannot leave the steering knuckle hanging by the tie rod and brake line. It will damage them if you do that. Installation for both is the reverse of removal. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.